Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue on and finish up this first lesson. A few other things that I need to show you. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is how to save your query off to a file. And how we do that is second icon over, save the script to a file. So we're going to save the, our query off to a file. And I'm already at the location that we need to be. You probably aren't since you, this is the first time you've done it. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do is where you installed the training package, you're going to have a directory named webroot. I want you to go find that directory. You may pause the video and, until you get to that point and then come back. Okay, once you found the webroot subdirectory, you're going to find a directory in there named learn, all uppercase. Double click on that. Underneath that will be a directory named MySQL foundations. You want to double click on that. And then you'll see two directories, examples, and your work. You want to double click on the your work directory. And there you can name your query. We'll just name this one my. Query one. Dot SQL, and then we'll save it. And you'll notice that the tab name has changed to the name of your file. <coughs> now let's add a uh, a column back to our query. Add another column, I should say, back to our query. We're going to add the price column to our query. Now I'm purposely going to make this error because I would be remiss if I didn't show you how to troubleshoot. As you're writing queries, you're going to make mistakes. It's inevitable. And so you need to understand kind of how to troubleshoot the things that you do wrong. So I'm going to run my query and, whoa, my grid has disappeared. That's your first indication that something's wrong with your query. Well, your next question should be, what do I do? Well, if we come up here, the middle pane here, and we click it, it's going to allow us to display our output window. And what that's going to give us is the error that we made. So it gives us this cryptic error code. Actually, if you go Google MySQL 1054, you'll see what that error code is. Unknown column. Unknown column, PRIC, in the field list. So essentially what it's saying is, I don't have a column in this table with this name. So the error that's reported back in this case is, is fairly intuitive. So we can go, oh, well, I dropped the E. We can make the change. And just for laughs, let's uh, let's put the com let's put a comma at the end, and you'll see we get an error here. Let's run it again and see what happens. Ah, not so intuitive an error here. Now we get error code 1064. You have an error in your SQL syntax. Oh, that's really helpful. Could you uh, maybe tell me what it is? Well, a couple things to note. When you get the, the red X up here in the query thing, what that's telling you is you've got an error in your code, and it's somewhere from this point up above. So in this case, we can go back and kind of make the change. Ah, it's gone away. We're good to go again. And we can run our query. While we're in the output window, a couple other things I want to point out is the output window, when you run a query and it's successful, it's going to tell you how many rows were returned. And when you're modeling and prototyping new queries, that can come in very, very handy. So the output window is actually a, a good resource for you. It just takes up a fair amount of real estate. So unless I really need to have a look at it, I, I like to keep it kind of hidden and out of sight, and you can get to it rather quickly. Next, I want to show you how to create an alias name for your column. And you do that by 
using the as keyword and then whatever name you want within double quotes. And in this case I want to rename the I want to have, create an alias name for price called PPS. The abbreviation price per share. And so I do that I rerun my query and you can see the column name has changed to my alias name. Now I also want to call your attention to one other thing. We've saved our query off to a file and if you notice up here there's an asterisk after the name of our query or in this case the name of our file. And what this is indicating to us is that we've made some changes to our query but we haven't saved them. So all we need to do to update the file is click again on the little file icon and the fact that the asterisk goes away tells us that the file has been saved and it's now up to date. So now I've given you enough information that you're ready to go off and do some exercises on your own. So this concludes your first lesson and go off and back to the workbook, do the lessons, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye.